Morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Mobile App Academy, where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps in the Now platform. My name, as always, is Charlie Steiner, product marketer here at ServiceNow. Today, we have something uh, I think a lot of you will be really looking forward to. And today, we'll be exploring common configurations and quick wins to get started with Now Mobile in Paris. So if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. This is a live building series that focuses on managing and building out mobile apps in real time. Our product experts presenting are here on the Zoom and in the chat, and we'll be able to provide guidance, best practices, and answer any of your questions along the way. We, ho we host these Mobile App Academy sessions every two weeks here on Zoom at 10 a.m. Pacific, and our recordings are posted to our YouTube playlist uh, Thursday mornings Pacific time as well. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this session, how we can improve going forward, whether you let us know in the chat or on our mobile apps and community page uh, that'll be linked in the chat as well. Let us know. Love to get your thoughts and any recommendations you have moving forward. Um, today we have David Ha and Fu Ho on the call. So I'd love to introduce David to get things started. David. Thanks for the intro, Charlie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our mobile app academy. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow. I also have Fu Ho with me, who is a solution architect on a mobile team here at ServiceNow as well. And we want to give a warm welcome to everyone joining us here live today. Um, for today's topic, we'll be covering some of the new enhancements uh, around Now Mobile in Paris, addressing common use cases and workarounds that we hear around the mobile community, uh, and uh, things like you know, how you can enhance your catalog experience with the new catalog properties window that we introduced in Paris, as well as in-app mobile theme. And uh, a great uh, prerequisite to today's live session is actually one of our earlier app academies that we hosted called Getting Started with Now Mobile. And uh, in that academy, we taught you the plugins that you need to activate the Now Mobile app, what's available out of the box, how to edit your approvals applet, change fields, configure requests, and so much more. Charlie, um, feel free to go ahead and send a link in the chat uh, to that video in case there's anyone who hasn't seen it yet. Um, and so we'll take that knowledge and we'll build upon it and uh, show you a few other things that will help you through your now mobile implementation. Okay. Uh, but before we get started, just want to share some resources. If you are new to mobile, we recommend that you first check out some of our self anonymous resources, such as our mobile um, guidebooks, our white papers, all which you can find on our mobile community site. And essentially, each one of these will walk you through your mobile implementation best practices, migration best practices, as well as mobile UX best practices so that you can learn and improve the overall design of your mobile apps. And if you're looking for more hands-on training, we also have the Now Learning site, which will teach you the necessary mobile development fundamentals around how to get started with Mobile Studio. And of course, we also have Mobile App Academy, which you can access all of our past recordings, uh, which are also available on our mobile community site. Okay. So let's start off today talking a little bit more about the common use cases that we hear around Now Mobile. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and dive into each uh, one of these, um, or just a few of these, and we'll start building them on our instance. But typically when customers are implementing Now Mobile, there's a, a first few things that they'll consider. First is really, you know, how can we leverage the out of the box Now Mobile app? If you've watched our Getting Started with Now Mobile Academy, you would know that, the, uh, that out of the box, your end users will already have access to their catalogs, to uh, KB articles, requests and approvals. So many of the things that uh, they can already do uh, on their employee service portal, um, that experience that you get on the platform. And so implementing now mobile is really, how can we fill in the gaps and optimize your end users use cases so that they can have the best possible experience on their mobile device. So that's the very first step, uh, understanding the baseline and what's available out of the box. And then really it's identifying what is it that your general employees need on mobile that isn't already covered. Uh, and then once you have your list of gaps that you need to fill, these are some of the common modifications um, that take place. Uh, it's things like aligning your catalogs, KVs, and requests so that they align with their service portal experience. Or, you know, how do you add change fields and actions or add actions on your applets uh, so that your end users have all the information uh, and tools that they need to do on the mobile app. And then there's other, other design things such as, you know, how do I configure icons? images and in-app color theming so that it also better aligns with the service portal experience. Um, and that way you're getting the seamless um, and employees or service uh, portal experience, whether you're on mobile or desktop. Um, and then 
you also have customers who have custom use cases, uh, and that requires a little bit more configuration, such as, you know, how do I migrate some of our record producers or web forms that were on platform uh, or on mobile classic, and how do we go ahead and bring them over to the now mobile client? And this was actually a session that we covered just last week. Uh, so feel free to check out our recordings that you can find on mobile community as well as YouTube. Um, and other common use cases are like enabling push notifications so that my end users are alerted anytime there's um, activity on approval uh, or any activity that you want to enable uh, for push or other things like how do I customize my global search experience so that my end users can search up things really quickly and take actions much quicker. <clears throat> so you can see that I've hyperlinked each one of these use cases and um, you know all these use cases have been covered at some point uh, in one of our mobile academies. And I've hyperlinked them so that you can easily reference uh, these use cases as you need them. Um, and uh, you know, our goal really is to continue learning about all your common use cases so that we can cover them in future app academies and then we can share them out as information. So we'll also post this deck um, in, in the next couple of days. Um, so you'll be able to reference this later on as well. Okay. Um, what we have next uh, on this slide are really uh, a lot of common customer issues and workarounds that we get asked about all the time. I won't go through each one of these. Uh, again, since we're going to upload these slides on mobile community, uh, feel free to go ahead and check them out on your own time. Uh, but um, we will be covering some of these use cases here today in the live session. Uh, for example, uh, there's some questions around how do we exclude desktop only catalog items from now mobile? You know, sometimes there's catalog items that you only want on the desktop experience, but maybe not so much on mobile. Um, and I think a lot of customers are familiar with the availability field that you can um, configure on the catalog itself. And we get questions all the time on why that trigger isn't working. And so what is the solution in Paris? And we'll cover that in just a bit. Uh, but these are links to many of the common solutions uh, for each one of those examples. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to mention before we jump into the live build are some of the limitations of roadmap around now mobile. Um, there are some new features coming in Quebec for now mobile that may address some of these previous issues. One example is, you know, maybe not, uh, maybe you've experienced um, uh, or, or your end users are asking, why can't they open up KBs um, or open up attachments on, in their inside of KBs? Um, so previously that was kind of a limitation uh, if, if that's something that you're trying to do prior to Quebec. But in Quebec, we've actually enhanced our KB experience. So now it's a native experience as opposed to just web views. And with that, this will allow end users to add comments to the activity stream, uh, as well as a view attachments in the related list. And if you're interested in learning more about the Quebec features and overview, we'll actually be covering a roadmap session on April 21st. It's an overview of the mobile platform's latest overview in Quebec, as well as some roadmap items coming in Rome. You definitely don't wanna miss out on that. So make sure you register on our mobile community page. And then Charlie, uh, please go ahead and share that link as well so that everyone has access to that, okay? And with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into our core topic for today. Uh, some of the enhancements made to Now Mobile in Paris that you might not be aware of. So in Paris, uh, the Now Mobile team released a new properties window that helps with improving your catalog experience in Now Mobile. Um, and these were built out to address some of the common ask and issues that, that we were hearing. Uh, just to give some context, prior to Paris, system admins had very limited control on some of the things that they configure around service catalogs. <clears throat> on the back end, these flows were built using remote or virtual tables, as well as complicated scripts that were all protected and only has read only access, even for system admins. But by doing this, it makes it quite difficult for admins to configure anything when it comes to managing your catalog flow on now mobile. And you know, some of the common asks that we hear um, uh, from customers that they want to do but can't do are things like, you know, how do I sort the order of my catalog categories on my browse services tab? Uh, by default, it's alphabetical, but do we have any control on how we can sort some of these categories? Or Maybe things like, you know, how do we hide catalog items from now mobile without removing it from the desktop platform experience? Um, you know, so maybe they really want end users to know that the catalog isn't available on mobile, but um, it can be done on desktop. How do we do that in Paris? Um, or on a more extreme use case, <clears throat> maybe your end users, or maybe you have a catalog item 
that you don't want discoverable in mobile at all, whether they do, they use the global search or they go through the browse services, they don't want that to be discovered on our mobile at all. How would we go ahead and implement that? So we'll configure each one of these and I'll show you the intended experience of what that will look like uh, as we enable some of those toggles. There's one additional property that you can control with this enhancement as well. And it's changing the color of your uh, catalog buttons. And if you aren't already aware, you know, the catalog experience on now mobile is a web-based experience. And typically when a customer wants to apply an app color theming um, so that it matches with their uh, company's brand colors, they'll use the mobile theming module to configure this. But something to know is mobile theming will only apply colors to all your native screens and buttons. Um, it, it seems that if you wanna apply these colors to the buttons on your web screens, it will get missed. Um, so the now mobile team introduced a new property in Paris that will allow you to easily uh, customize the order now button. And we'll show you how to do that as well, okay? So let's go ahead and actually jump into my instance and start configuring the first use case. Um, so I should be sharing my desktop now, which should see my mobile app as well as my instance. Okay. So the first use case that I want to show is you know, how do we sort our catalog categories on the browse services tab? So it's just to show you what I'm talking about, you know, I have a services tab out of the box, right? And this will show me, show me all of my catalog items and services. And underneath here is a browse services um, uh, applet launcher, right? I can see different categories for benefits. Can we help you and so forth? Right now, you can see by default, these are ordered by um, alphabetically, right? But let's say that, you know, maybe some of these categories might not be as relevant. And so we want to put the important stuff on top and the less important stuff on the bottom, right? Um, and so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to search up um, catalog administration. I want to show you where you can find this new properties window. Catalog administration. administration. And under catalog administration, there's a properties tab. And then within service catalog configuration, um, we'll click on the mobile tab. Okay. And here you'll see the new catalog properties that uh, were introduced for now mobile in Paris. So quick tip, um, you're always gonna make sure that you're in the global scope. Anytime you try to make uh, configurations to the properties, otherwise they won't see. Even though when you click save, it might seem like it's saved. If you don't save in global, it might not work, okay? Um, okay, so if you take a look at this first property here, you notice that there's a catalog category sort option in now mobile. Uh, by default, it's gonna sort by title, uh, or in other words, it'll sort alphabetically by title A to Z. Um, but if you want more control on how you sort your categories, we can change this from title to order, and then we'll go ahead and click save. I'm in global, so it, so it should be able to save. Okay, and then if I go back to the mobile tab, it, it seems like it's saved. So now what we wanna do is um, we wanna next, open up our mobile employee service portal or what we refer to as an ESP. Um, so on the left hand of our nav, if we look up now mobile, we have an option for catalogs. If I open this up, it's gonna take me to the mobile employee service portal. Um, so out of the box, your platform service catalog experience should already automatically map to the mobile employee service portal uh, by default. Um, so all the catalog items that your end users already have access to on desktop, they will also have access to on the now mobile. There's no additional configuration needed out of the box. Um, but if you have any other you know, new portal catalogs, you'll have to make sure that it's mapped to the mobile employee service portal, such as, you know, maybe you have an HR service portal or, or something else, right? And we can see here that, you know, these catalogs are mapped. Um, and basically what it's doing is this mapping, it's, it's taking all of the web forms from catalogs and automatically resizing them so that they best fit on your end user's mobile screen. MESP helps build a hybrid mobile experience that looks and feels native, and it provides a better end user experience. And this is kind of the, um, the structure that we'll be moving forward with in future releases for now mobile. 
um, you know, anytime you have to configure a URL applet or something like that, we want to make sure that you're accessing it in the best experience possible. Okay. So I'm going to go and click into the service portal here or service catalog. And in the related list at the bottom here, uh, we have a tab for categories. Um, and here we can see all the categories that are available on my browse tab. Um, notice that on a new instance, by default, I'm not seeing an order call. And so what I can do here is I can actually click on this gear toggle and bring over order. Um, order, okay. And by default, all the uh, categories are, are set to zero. Um, and so I, I think this is just randomly arranging um, the categories at the moment. Uh, but what we want to do is, um, let's say the, uh, do we have an offices category? Yeah, we have an office category. Let's say that we actually want to put the office uh, category uh, to the bottom of our list, uh, maybe because it's currently the least important category for my end users right now since uh, all of my employees are currently working from home. So let's actually go ahead and set the order for this to 100. Um, and now it should show up last on our browse list, right? Um, so let's go ahead and make sure we save this. And now at this point, we can refresh our uh, mobile client and update the changes. So if I just swipe my finger down from top to bottom, I should see offices jump down to the bottom. Uh, looks like I'll have to click see all to see additional. And there you can see offices was like number two, but now it'll go all the way to the bottom. And so, you know, if there's any other categories that I want to rearrange, I would just continue giving it an order. Okay. So that's the first property uh, and use case. Uh, so now let's go ahead and move on to our second use case. But before we move on, um, Fu, are there any questions in the chat that we want to address before I move on to the next one? Uh, no questions. Very no great. Questions. Okay, cool. So uh, moving on to the second use case, um, you know, how do we hide catalog items from now mobile without removing it from the desktop platform experience? Um, so what we want to do is we want to prevent end users from accessing catalog items that were meant only for uh, that were meant only to be accessed on desktop, and you know, instead of it, um, uh, instead of it not showing up at all, there's going to be like a an end state screen, uh, and there will be a pop up message that will tell end users that the catalog item is not available on mobile, but maybe they should try again later when they're in front of a computer. And I'll show you that in, uh, experience in just a second, but let's go ahead and configure that so I can show you. Um, and to do this, we're going to again pull up our catalog properties window on our instance. So if we, again, look up catalog administration and then open up the properties tab and then go to mobile. Um, and on this window, we're going to, uh, we see that there's a property called include desktop only items in now mobile. So what this is referring to is, this is actually referring to the uh, availability field um, that you can see on uh, the catalog item itself. And I'll show you that in just a second. But by default, this is set to true. Uh, we wanna set this uh, to false so that it's not including desktop on now mobile, okay? We're, we're in the global scope. And so now we'll go and click save. And now I'm expecting anytime I set a catalog's item availability to desktop only, it should hide itself from the now mobile app. Okay, so let's let's find a catalog item um, from our offices category. So let's look up uh, now mobile again. We'll open up catalogs for now mobile, and then we'll jump into service catalog. We'll find our offices category at the bottom here. And here I can see that there's four catalog items inside of my office category. Um, let's, uh, let's actually open up the video conferencing catalog item. 
And to be able to edit this record, uh, we should be in global scope, which I'm already in. And you know, I'm scrolling up and down here and I'm not seeing an availability field. Um, and this is, this is a, a new instance. Um, and so by default, it's actually hiding this field in the background. And so I'm actually gonna wanna bring it over. So if I go to form layout, there should be a field called availability. And if I bring that over and click save, you're gonna see that all of your catalog items by default will set the availability for desktop and classic mobile. <clears throat> um, and you know, mobile classic, uh, the client, it's, it's no longer gonna be relevant in the future. Um, so you can expect that option to disappear when uh, the client's deprecated. Uh, so, uh, that's uh, when that time comes in the future. Um, but for this use case, you know, classic isn't relevant to me. Uh, I only want this catalog item to show on the desktop experience. And so if I update this, I should expect this to um, hide itself from mobile, okay? So now all we have to do is uh, refresh our mobile app. Go back to our app launcher, refresh. We'll tap into see all. If I scroll to the bottom, there's offices. And now um, if I tap into others, you see that there's still a video conferencing catalog item. But when I tap on it, it should take me to a screen that says it's not available. Yeah. So it says we're, you know, we're sorry, the item isn't available on mobile. Um, and, you know, th this might be helpful for customers who want to indicate to the end users that, you know, those end users should be accessing it on their desktops uh, instead. Um, so this is the default screen image, the default text that you get in Paris. But if you're wondering on, you know, how do I configure this end state screen? This is actually something that's going to be available in Quebec. And it's something that you can already do in Quebec. Um, if you're on that uh, build. Um, and if you want to go and you know, get your jump start on this configuration, uh, if you're on a Quebec build, it's already available on Hardwick Docs. Um, and uh, Charlie can share that link uh, in the Zoom chat if, if you're interested. Okay. Um, another thing that I want to note is um, um, if we look up video conferencing on our global search, it should have the, the, the same experience, right? So if they're not going through the browse tab, they can also use the global search to look up their articles. Um, global search prioritizes, uh, I, I think it's using the Zing algorithm uh, currently. Uh, so the search is similar to platforms in, in Paris. And so it's, it's going to prioritize looking up the short description of your catalog item. And something in this short description of our video conferencing uh, to make sure that we pull it up, we can look up uh, inner office. And I should still be able to see video conferencing, right? So now if I tap into it, it should be the exact same experience. And then we'll go ahead and get the, we're sorry, the item isn't available on mobile. Okay. But let's say that you don't want this catalog item to be discoverable at all. Um, so whether you're going through the browse catalog list or you're trying to search it up on the search bar, you want this catalog item completely hidden. How do we go about doing that? Um, so this is something that we have control over on our catalog properties window as well. And to do this, we're again gonna open up our catalog properties window. Um, with the catalog administration. Administration. Over properties. Go to mobile. And then there's going to be a property called um, experiences for items not available on that mobile. Um, and by default, it's it's set to discoverable, so it'll show that message in this screen, right? Uh, but if we set this to not discoverable and we click save, uh, what I should expect is whether I'm using global search or going through the browse services, you're not going to be able to pull up this record at all. So let me go and show you that now. Um, if I refresh my app, I'm sure I'm gonna get out of here. First, let's make sure that it's no longer discoverable on browse services. So we'll tap on see all, scroll down into offices, tap to other. See now, you know, the, it's no longer discoverable here. 
but let's also make sure that it's not discoverable on our global search as well. So again, I looked up inner offices to pull up this record. And now we're only seeing patch and shipping, right? So uh, you'll have to use that combination um, of setting, uh, include desktop items only in now mold to false, as well as setting the experience for items not available in now mold to not discoverable. If this is the intended experience that you want for your end users. Okay. And again, this property is useful if you're trying to hide the catalog in both browse and global search. Um, the last thing I want to show uh, for today is mobile theme. Um, I don't think this is something that we covered in the ETAS mobile app that I'm yet. But just in case you're unfamiliar, mobile theming uh, is a concept that allows us to change the color schemes inside of our mobile apps. Um, so instead of seeing you know, the default uh, service now green, let's change some of these colors so that it better aligns with my organization's colors of branding. And to do this, um, we're going to look up clients on our left hand nav. And there's this little table called client themes. And on a, a new instance, um, you should only see the default uh, client themes. And this is the ServiceNow branding colors. Okay. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to create a new theme. So we're going to go and create a new record. And let's go ahead and name this company branding. Um, and then it's going to ask us to apply four different um, hex values for our four colors. Um, this is, will be our palette. Um, if you want to learn about how these colors will apply across your mobile client, uh, refer back to the product docs for mobile theming guidelines. We have the whole product docs page and it has lots of graphics that will tell you exactly what's being branded and what's changing. Um, and then Charlie will go ahead and throw a link in the chat so you can get quick access to that as well. Um, I'm going to add my new color palette here. I think I already saved some hex values just so it's quick. We'll apply this for brand. Our secondary color. Secondary color. Oh, it's the primary. Um, secondary. And then destructive. Okay. And then once I have my four colors in, I'll go ahead and click submit. Um, and we're not quite done yet, although we just created the new palette for our client themes. Our instance still doesn't know which of our mobile clients that we want to apply this to until we point to it. And to do this, we're going to open up our native clients under system mobile. And here you can see the three different native clients. You have onboarding, um, you have ServiceNow agent, and then you have now mobile, which is the one that we want to open up. So let's go ahead and open this up. And to configure this, it's going to want us to jump into the scope. So let's go ahead and click here to jump to the correct, the correct scope. Um, and if you see here, by default, your client theme is going to be empty. Uh, anytime the client theme uh, for, your client, uh, for your native client is empty, it's going to use the default service on colors. So I can override this by just selecting the theme that we just created, which we called company branding. Okay, and now if I go ahead and click update, uh, we can refresh our native client and see the changes. So now you can see that it's using like a red uh, border. Uh, you can see that the, the see all buttons have changed as well to yellow. And then uh, the buttons, if I have like a footer button, I can find one. Uh, those colors have changed as well, right? Reject, approve and so forth. Um, however, these are all native screens, right? All, everything you're seeing here, this app launch is completely native. Uh, these are native applets, list applets, right? Um, but what if we were to jump into a web screen that also has a similar button? So let's say that I wanted to, um, for example, let's say we wanted to order an iPad. Uh, if we search up an iPad through the global search on our, our services tab, um, it's going to pull up a web viewing experience. Um, and so you'll see a web page. And you're going to see how the colors aren't affected if they're web pages. So let's go ahead and look up iPad. 
and I open up this service catalog for Apple iPad 3. And here you can see that, you know, the order now button is still a service now default grade. Um, so uh, the question is, how do we go and configure this and change it so that it matches with our overall mobile theme? Um, and this is actually another property that was introduced um, to that window as well. So I can easily change this by going to our um, catalog administration. We go to mobile. There's this last property called primary colors for buttons in the catalog experience in now mobile. So right now it's set to green. Let's go ahead and make sure it matches. Um, I think it was primary color this. So we'll go and copy and paste this hex value and then we'll click save. So now um, if I refresh my mobile app, I saved it in global, so it should work. Um, if I open up my catalog item, you can see that that button's changed to the yellow that I wanted. Okay. Um, and now our entire now mobile experience, uh, the, the in-app colors are aligned with our overall company's brand colors. And that's what I wanted. Okay. So now we're done. Um, and that pretty much wraps up all the topics that I wanted to cover for today for the now mobile enhancements in Paris. Any questions? Are there any questions that we want to highlight? I'm seeing a lot of activity in the chat. Yeah, there's actually a few. Uh, some of them were answered. Um, I think one, one is um, regarding the classic um, mobile app. Uh, I think there was one that says, what happens if you choose mobile classic only? And um, I think there's an option there. Yes, so there is an option for mobile classic only. If you are still using our legacy mobile client for mobile classic, um, if you set it to mobile classic, it will only show on our mobile classic client. Um, you won't see it on your desktop screens and you won't see it on any of the new mobile clients, right? Uh, new mobile clients meaning the now mobile app, service now agent app and the onboarding um, app. So um, if you're using our new mobile platform, uh, it classic basically won't do anything for you. But if you're still using the classic mobile client, then uh, that's that's what that uh, field was historically used for. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, great. Uh, the next question is regarding the tab. Um, when it was like, um, were you, uh, let's see. Will the tab color also change to secondary color inside a catalog item? And I think he's referring to, if you go inside a catalog item, they have a, a tab like details and work notes. I think that's the uh, segment. Um, uh, which, which catalog item? So if you go inside the catalog item, uh, they have a tab like details. details. Uh, oh, is this just based on like a custom use case or through today's attempt? No, I think it's through, is there, do we have a catalog item that has tabs where they can, um, I don't think I've seen one. Sure. Uh, maybe we can unmute um, and let's have a conversation with this person. Okay. Uh, Cornell, hopefully I pronounced your name right. Um, I'm going to unmute you and if you can let us know which catalog item that you're talking about. Um, let's see, let's try to find him. Okay, I think you're allowed to talk. Um, are you able to speak? Am I audible? Uh, cool. Perfect, we can hear you. Hey, how's it going? Perfect. So uh, if, if, if I follow the documentation link, uh, Inside the documentation link, it says a list uh, screenshot. Under that list screenshot, I can see two tab on the tab, uh, on on the top. One says oh. open and resolve, and 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 those tab color is changing with the secondary uh, color which is mentioned in the example. 
I just wanted to make sure that it's the same thing applies. See, you, you can see here details and updates, mm -hmm. but they are not changing here. But in screenshot, it, it, it says in the documentation. Oh, is that so? Um, that might be uh, uh, something that we need to go back to the doc team about. Um, mobile theming should not affect these tabs. However, is that something that um, you want to do, uh, coloring these tabs? But uh, it might be a, a, a poor screenshot on our side that we can definitely fix. Um, sure. But if this is an enhancement, uh, that's, that's something that you want to include in mobile theming. We are looking to more you know, um, use cases on what customers want to brand. Mm -hmm. So if there's any additional colors or any spots that you want to you know, have more flexibility on, on choosing colors over, please submit them over to the idea portal on our, our mobile community site uh, so that we can kind of look into that more. Sure. Um, but the intended experience is, you should, as of Paris, uh, these two segments are not uh, the colors you can't change. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, cool. We have another question from Mike. Uh, he created a theme and set it to the native client now mobile, but the client theme um, is not showing the changes. Hmm. Uh, let's see, if we were to troubleshoot, uh, uh, can we, um, let me see, so what are possible things that could be missed? So once you create a client theme, uh, the only thing that you have to do is just point it to the right native client, right? So you got a native client, you open up the client that you want, and then as long as the client theme field um, is filled in, it should override with whatever theme that you put in. And if this is not working, then uh, we would recommend to open up uh, a ticket with support so that they can take uh, some look into it. Um, I'm not aware of any issues with client theme data, so that, that's a new one for sure. Yeah, it, it should, yeah, once you point to the, the client theme, it should work, but... Um, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think he says that that's... Fine. Um, okay. We have another question from Tori. So I'm just going through this list. What is yep. the icon name of the function to open incident on the top right hand corner of your service tab? It looks like it should be a clipboard explanation, explanation that it, but in our instance, that icon shows a home instead. So the icon name of the function to open an incident. Icon name of it. Uh, on the service tab. Oh, these are here. Um, uh, top right from your service tab. Let me let me unmute Tony yeah. and this. Uh, uh, Troy, sorry, Troy. Hey, Troy, can you hear us? Troy, by the way, I uh, unmuted you. Yep. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right, so it's at the very top right, right underneath your battery. The battery. Uh, oh, this one, top right? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so this is a quick action. Um, so uh, I think by default, I don't know what this quick action does, but I can easily check this out. So let's let's go through that right now. Um, if you wanna change the, the icon of quick action, uh, we'll go through the exercise actually. This, this is actually pretty helpful. So I would start by looking up our app launcher. And this exercise of me going through this right now, we have a mobile hierarchy app academy uh, that uh, we've done an app academy on quick actions as well as uh, hierarchy. Those two are definitely great um, watch throughs if you haven't gotten the chance. But let's start from Apple Launcher. We're going to look for the services Apple Launcher. So I'm going to look for service. And this is the right one. I know that if I look at the scope, it's pointing to now mobile. So I know that this is the correct uh, Apple Launcher. Um, and in our header, there is um, a little thingy called header function. And right now it's currently opening the cart. This is the, the, the action that's the, that the services team has put out of the box. So if I open this up um, there, and then I change it to the correct scope. There is a field for icons uh, and it's currently using this icon cart. Um, and if you, if you wanna see what icons you can configure, uh, we actually have a product docs page on mobile icons. You just go through the search and look up mobile icon. Um, I would use the latest uh, product docs at any time. Um, they, they will also apply to Paris and Orlando as well, but 
the newest updates will always have more information and more accurate information. So we'll launch mobile icons into that. And this, these are docs on how to configure your quick action icons. Um, this is a guide to use it inside of Mobile Studio, which is a lot more intuitive, but let me show you the back inside of it, um, uh, which it might be useful to some customers. So if I open this up, this record, the first thing I wanna note is um, uh, the icon types of font are the only ones that are supported for, for both quick actions as well as nav tabs. If it's an image, which is a lot of icons that I see, um, it's not gonna be supported and it's not gonna work. So we're gonna make sure that the, the type is always font. And then the name and value are basically gonna have to match with what we provide um, on the product docs, right? So it'll give you the name, um, and I should expect a value somewhere. Color values. Uh, where's the values at? Value. Oh. I would be surprised if these values are missing. Uh, I will take an action item to see what's going on here. Um, but the idea here is we give you all the icons that are supported. Um, unfortunately, you can't just create your own icons today. However, if there's any specific icons or additional use cases, go through the idea portal. If there's enough upvotes, you know, this is something that we can have, a, uh, we can bring up to the inbound team and make sure that this is, uh, that they can prioritize that if, if more icons are necessary. Um, uh, but yeah, so you can change any one of these. So if I were to change the shape to, um, let's try changing it to like a clipboard. See what happens. If I click save, oops. I would expect this not to work because I don't have a value, but let's try. Yeah, so I, th I think this is highly dependent on this value, which I don't currently have. Um, but uh, I'll take it as an action item and we'll uh, take the SIP doc team. But hopefully that answers your question. Once this is uh, correctly updated, uh, it should work the way that you want it to. Uh, another method is you can go through mobile studio as well to create quick actions, which are a lot more intuitive. Great, yeah. I think. I think another question was related with like, you know, the icons, the links are still using ServiceNow default color. Uh, can theming change that? So um, let's say for that example, like my locker that you have right there, um, it's using, I guess a specific color or maybe a link. Um, actually, no, no, if you go to a service catalog and if there's a link, is it still using um, ServiceNow's default color oh they, like show more oh okay um so we're aware of this um this is actually something that requires main access to change it is changeable uh, but you'll have to open up a ticket with support um we're looking into making this more accessible some reason there's a read only permission uh, for system admins so uh this can't be done by customers however support is able to change these colors for you so you know if the Clipboard icon and the show more, show more um, button colors or something you want to change, just open up a ticket to support. Um, um, everything else you'll have control over that order now and so forth. Uh, good news, Mike was able to resolve his issue. Was this um, uh, about hexa value? Uh, so he got it to work, the theming oh, part. Awesome, perfect. Um, and then once we do make this customer um, facing uh, and customers are allowed to, uh, update these fields, we'll definitely uh, cover this in a future app academy as well. Um, I think we have one more question from um, Paul Perdep. Uh, any specific requirement size for this icon as we are using specific for desktop view? Is there any specific for mobile view? 
um, I want to make sure what fun what icon you're talking about. Are you talking about the mobile icon, or are you talking about the icon within the mobile? So there's a big distinction. I'm gonna unmute you. Um, All right, are you able to uh, speak? Paul? Uh, I think you're still muted, but you are permitted to talk. Uh, if Paul isn't unmuting, maybe we can move on to the next question until then. Okay. Uh, I think those are all the questions. Um, there's a lot of questions about. Um, there was oh, a lot of like questions. Someone raised their hand as well. Um, so I know that there's a question. Uh, Abdul, uh, I'm going to allow you to talk um, since you raised your hand. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Or maybe he just accidentally <laughs> raised his hand. Oh, hello. Sorry. Yes. Hi, can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, so uh, actually we are in Paris and uh, we started implementing uh, uh, Now Mobile. It's a brand new uh, application we started. Uh, initially, we don't had anything uh, on the mobile app. So the client uh, wants to have a logo. So for that, what we did is like, uh, on the applet launches, uh, we have added as one of the image type and added an image, which is being visible after uh, the name and the search icon. You have it on the home page, right? Like the carousel widget where you see the welcome service and uh, a kind of a video. So, but the client wants that to be on the above, right on the top of uh, the search icon. So do we have such? If you see here, the hello, David, Right, so they they want that to be on the top of Hello David. Oh, you want uh, what do you want on top of the Hello David? The icon itself, like this moved up, or yeah, kind yeah, kind of. Ah, uh, see. So basically, what we did is like uh, we just for the workaround, we use the same applet launcher where we have added as an image type and added on that, and that is visible. What you see it here, right? The carousel type of a widget. Mm -hmm. But uh, the client saying that they, since this is a logo, so they do, they wanted to have it on the right on the top, uh, you know, before the the greeting like hello David or whatever it is. Before that, they want to see that image there. Uh, kind, of, I mean, image in the sense of the logo. Um, food. Uh, did you kind of understand uh, what we're trying to accomplish here? Like, uh, no. Um, so, so, so. Okay, let me let me keep it in short. Yeah. So basically, uh, the customer wants to have a logo the way we have it on our service now native instance, right? Sure. A kind mm -hmm. of a logo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since we don't see the direct option in mobile apps, what we did is like we created under the applet launcher of type uh, image and added that logo in the image, but that image is visible under, after the search icon. But they want to have that as a logo, since the, that is a logo, they want to have it right on the top before the hello, David. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So you basically want to move this between the global search and the title. Uh, you actually want this up above everything. Yeah. Um, I see, okay. So that currently is not, uh, it's not configurable as of today, however, it's, it's an interesting use case because um, I just don't think there's any submissions through the ideal portal that a customer has been wanting to do that yet. However, if you were to submit that, that's something that we can look into. Um, but right now, as of Parish, there's no configuration possible to uh, push this to the very top, unfortunately, today. Uh, but um, if you join our roadmap session that we're going to host on April 21st. Um, you'll, you would learn that we are working on a mobile SDK. And so with that mobile SDK, there's a lot of things that you're going to be able to do and have more flexibility and control on, whether it's moving this to however you like and, and so forth. So uh, definitely stay in tune with that roadmap session. And then also have your customer submit that 
uh, on the ideal portal on community, just so that our, our teams are aware that that's something that that needs uh, that customers want to do. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if you go to idea portal on community. Yeah, I know that David. I, okay. I'll do it. Yeah. Um, in Madrid, it, we did used to have a banner that was called a hero banner, and it basically put the banner at the very top. But I think when we moved to New York, we kind of set this as the default, and then you can have banners underneath. Um, okay. That's yeah. Yeah. Another, another good question uh, was from Paul. I think he un, he's able to unmute himself. Basically, um, uh, on the media applet um, with function, uh, is basically can you have a URL, uh, when you click on a media section, can you go to a particular URL? Oh, can yes. You, yep. Yep. you can definitely do that. Uh, I think we actually covered that in a previous mobile app academy. Um, I would need to find exactly which one we did that on, but here I can show you on this instance real fast, uh, very quickly. Um, yeah, we have time. Okay, Let, let's let's show that real fast. So, let's say I want to put a media section on my services app launcher, right? All you would have to do is you would have to create a new UI section at the very top uh, with the UI type um, uh, media. So, if I open up our app launchers. And then I go to services and then I go to body, switch into the right scope. Um, I would have to create, uh, let's see, let's switch into the pro scope, catalog, catalog here. Okay. So once you're in the right scope, you'll be able to start inserting new rows. Um, and if I were to create a new section, you can see that there's a new section type called media, right? I would click okay. Um, and then it's gonna ask for an image and all you have to do is uh, upload an attachment, choose your file, whatever that file name is, put it into the image. Um, and then if you want to create a link, right? You would, it would be applied here. So this function instance, um, uh, the function instance, um, Fu, do you remember what should be associated to the function instance here? This is a, this is the location of media. Uh, um, can't remember the configuration off the top of my head. Uh, you have to create a. Oh, oh, oh! I said you want to. Um. But let's see if I already selected image. I wonder why I can't select anything. What's going on? Maybe we need to create a function instance first. I mean, I'm sure there's a function instance somewhere. Right? Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm just not sure why nothing's showing up. Can I do this? Is this a bug? Is, what's going on here? Mm. That's so weird. Do you uh, want to change a different type? Maybe, no. Should be fine. Let, let's submit this and then let's, let's reopen it and see what's going on. What just happened? Uh, um maybe um the audience says maybe it's because of the scope that you're in are you in global scope no it should be fine um let's name this test select like a banner submit and then we'll save the section here we go. Okay. Uh, I need to report this as a bug because this should not be happening right here. That's weird. But now if I click on a search, I can now select my function instance. Um, so you need to create a new function instance, right? So um, when I create a function instance, it's going to ask for uh, your parent table, which is going to be app launcher uh, because you want 
uh, because this media is sitting on the Apple Watcher, right? And then when it asks for the parent, you're going to select the name of your Apple Watcher tab. So it's going to be services. And then, uh, and then you just select the function that you created for it, right? So if you're trying to navigate to like a web browser or you're trying to navigate to a different screen, you'd, you'd create that navigation first and then select it. Uh, let's say navigate to news, for example. We'll give it a name, navigate to news. And then the location has to be media section. And these are all the important fields that you need to select to be able to create your navigation on that media. And then you click Submit. Uh, we'll name this Maps uh, Media. Okay. And we'll update. <clears throat> so now there is now a link that allows you to navigate some of those. Okay. Uh, there's a more uh, in-depth configuration uh, that's in one of the mobile app academies. You just have to search through that playlist. Any other questions? Um, there's one from uh, Troy. Uh, is there a way to use login.do to access the mobile app? Um, I think login.do is mainly for um, the web. Uh, I'm going to unmute you, Troy. Troy. I think you're, yeah, I think you're allowed to speak. I'm assuming you want to use login.do for the native app. Um, you're able to speak if you want to unmute yourself. Okay, maybe he's AFK, I don't know. Um, um, if no other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up for today. Um, I think we're at time. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I hope you found this session informative and helpful. Uh, if you have any further questions, definitely reach out to us and ask on the mobile community site, or you can also find our extensive list of self enablement resources, as well as our past mobile app academies. Um, so make sure you subscribe to those forums, because that's kind of our main channel of communication for, for all news, announcements, and updates. Uh, we did revamp our mobile community site uh, recently. So definitely register uh, and sign up to news and announcements, because this is basically where we're going to communicate anything that happens in between releases. So uh, I think we're going to have a blog up soon around mobile card builder and kind of explain uh, what's going on there um, and so forth. There's an FEQ uh, tab as well as uh, essentials training. Uh, if you open up this essential trainings card, this will show you all of the kind of self-paced labs uh, and training that we have available. And we'll continue to update these as well. Um, and the last thing I want to note is for the Academy in two weeks, we're going to cover on how you can get started unifying your employee self-service experience on that mobile, right? So really think about how you can get started thinking, uh, get started thinking about consolidating your portal experiences into one single experience on that mobile. So whether you have an IT portal or an HR portal, what are those first few things I can start thinking about and doing uh, to get us to get to combine it into one single experience? Um, and then also remember, we're hosting a Quebec overview and roadmap session on April 21st. Um, if you go to our featured content, this is where you can register. Uh, and this will be uh, a very informative roadmap session. Okay. Until then, please continue following our mobile community site for the latest dates and information. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And we hope to see you next time. Cheers, everyone.